Hi, uh, my name is Byron. I'm a PhD student at Boston University. I work on cognitive and neural systems, which is computational neuroscience. I'm here to talk to you about glitch art. This is a true glitch. This is a, a video game that I went to play, and uh, this came up on the screen. There was a bad connection, and something weird happened. And I thought this was really cool. <laughs> so glitch art is the idea of taking digital media and breaking it, and then seeing what happens. This is an image, uh, a JPEG file, which I uh, uh, edited the core raw data and produced this sort of weird effect. This is another case of a JPEG image, which uh, I opened the file up in a Word document and kind of copied and pasted and threw stuff around and then looked at it, what happened, and again, you see this sort of uh, interesting effect. Uh, and here's another example where I took uh, this picture of a statue and uh, took another picture and kind of cross-pollinated them and you get these, these interesting effects. So glitch art is, again, it's this idea of finding something really interesting or beautiful or intriguing in what is broken, in errors, in imperfections. And it's sort of a, a visceral reaction in a sense to the over sort of polishedness that you find in certain computer graphics and media. Uh, this idea that we can break things or we can destroy them and still see something interesting in them, uh, as opposed to the airbrushed and highly polished nature of certain things. These images we're seeing now, instead of editing and manipulating the raw uh, underlying data of the images, we're actually manipulating the pixels in, a, in an interesting or, or unexpected way. So these take uh, a form of, for instance, shuffling tiles of color around. So maybe we just move the red channel and we shuffle it to one side. Or we take the green channel and we rotate it 90 degrees in the image and we shuffle it up uh, several pixels. So we get this sort of effect. Um, this is an example of, you don't just have to do this with images, or you can take the image and you can treat it as data. Data is data. It just programs what interprets it. This was a case of taking an image of a clock, converting it into an audio file, and compressing it as an MP3 file. Uncompressing it, and then seeing what happened. This is another case of taking an image, compressing it into, um, or taking it into audio, and then reconstructing it in a different way than I uh, converted it in, and we get this interesting and unexpected effect, which can be very interesting. Here's a case where we actually apply some uh, audio effects to the audio file we've created. This is taking an image and uh, adding a reversal effect to the audio. The core structure of the original image is still maintained, but the colors get warped drastically. This is the same image, but this time, instead of doing a reverse, we've done an octave up. So we've actually changed sort of the modulation of the image, and you can see that actually reflected. So this is not only fascinating, but it's an interesting way to see how things in the audio domain can be visualized. Here, I've taken two images. I've mixed them together using an audio program. And so this is a really interesting way to blend images together. And you can show things like volume actually affects how well they show up. I've also, and this is where my sort of neuroscience background comes in, have applied a neural model to them, which caused that lighting uh, effect. So now I'm going to get into something that's more relative to uh, my actual research. So one of the things I'm looking at or, or have studied is this idea of how we, we visualize information or how we, uh, how we actually see the world around us. And this next series of images are all related to this idea of sort of a virtual sensor. So when we take an image with a camera, we get a rectangular array of pixels. But the eye does not see that way. The eye actually has a high acuity in the center, and as it spreads out in sort of a circular fashion, we, we have degraded uh, vision. So this is, uh, these were all based on taking a, uh, this idea of a virtual sensor. So I want to take a rectangular image from a camera, I want to replay it as what it might look like if it was actually seen from the eye. Uh, and so these were all results of actually a bug in my code to the reconstruction. But I found it very, very interesting that this is what came out. So these are cases of things like images of trees, images of books, um, taken and passed through this idea of, of warping the image but then in the reconstruction process, I made a mistake. And we get this sort of accidental, but very, uh, I think, interesting and some compelling images. Um, in this case, uh, we get sort of this, these heart shapes that came out, which were interesting. Um, and uh, this, again, this is just taking a source photograph and doing something with like it. This is a combination of various these techniques. This is taking this idea of uh, this uh, transformation and then applying additional effects to it. All of this sort of comes under the auspices of something called data bending, which is this idea of taking images together, doing something weird with them in unexpected ways, and then seeing what comes out. Uh, a project I did over uh, the Advent season was to, to do something I called Glitch Advent, which is to highlight a number of images over the course of the season, one for each day, and I did this online. This was my final image for it, and uh, I really want to thank you for your attention. Uh, all of these images and others are posted on my Tumblr account that is listed up there. The Glitch Advent uh, site also highlights a number of other interesting artists, and I think it's interesting, and then that was my Twitter handle. Thank you.